Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Lifestyle Architecture Lab. In this show, I talk about lifestyle design, financial freedom, and also dissect the process, behavior, and routines of the personalities who have designed a lifestyle of freedom for themselves. These guests range from artists, musicians, entrepreneurs, lifestyle coaches, investors, professional athletes, etc. These conversations dig deep into their stories to find out their thought process, tools, strategies and tricks that makes them tick. This is happening. Let me just do what I love to. No 9 to 5. Risk comes from not knowing what you are doing. This is Lifestyle Architecture Lab and I am your host Himanshu Saksdeva. In this episode I am talking to Chirag Zhala. He is one of the best tattoo artists in Mumbai and the founder of Inks and Needles Tattoo Studio. His studio is one of the oldest tattoo studios in Bombay. His experience goes back more than 15 years in the tattoo industry. Chirag is a perfect example of architecting a lifestyle of his own choice. He comes from a completely different background, but his passion for art was so powerful that he put everything on the line to pursue his passion and now he gets paid well while doing what he loves. In this episode, we talk about his journey from starting up as one of the very few tattoo artists in India in the times when tattooing was more of a taboo than an acceptable art form. We cover a lot in this episode from tattoo designing, his travels to Germany and other parts of the world, his creative process, how he handled his tattoo business and much much more. There are a lot of things which you will find directly or indirectly useful to you even if you are not related to tattoos in any way. And you will be able to implement these uh, things in your life as well. So without further ado, please enjoy this conversation with Chirag Zala. Hey Chirag, welcome to the show. Hey Manshu, thank you for having me on your show. Yeah? Few years back when I was uh, fascinated with my friend's tattoos, so I asked him to suggest me a great tattoo artist to get myself a tattoo as well. So he suggested me your name that he's the one of the best in Mumbai. So I did a little research and found out that he was telling the truth indeed. But then my getting the first tattoo project went down the rabbit hole. And after all these years, I'm yet to get a tattoo. Anyway, that's, that's the story of a failed tattoo. <laughs> uh, coming back to you. Can you start off with your academic background and then initial career and eventually starting your journey as a tattoo artist back in the day and what problems you faced in that time? Um, well, uh, first of all, I'm not from the art background. Mm-hmm. I am a commerce graduate. Oh. Um, I graduated from uh, MMK in Bandra. Oh. And uh, back in those days, like... Uh, Nobody knew what tattoos were all about and all. So I had seen a friend of mine get a tattoo done. Mm. So that kind of, that was the first time I saw an actual tattoo. You were exposed to the tattoo? The yeah, of the I mean, it was yeah. quite uh, quite new mm-hmm. for me mm-hmm. to understand, like, you know, what what is this? But it looked absolutely cool. So, you know, mm-hmm. that kind of leaned me towards tattoos. And that's when I decided to get one done. Mm-hmm. Back in the college days, I got a tattoo done. Uh, I don't really remember the year, but probably it was in my SYJC or TY. All right, all right. And yeah, that that's where the whole chapter started. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, in earlier years, you like we were discussing the other day, and you told me you were working uh, in a tele tele yeah, yeah, call centers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. From there, how do you move to the tattoo uh, industry? 
So, uh, back in the days when, you know, I got a first tattoo done, it was a cool thing. Like, you know, there are very few people with tattoos. Mm -hmm. So, what used to happen, I used to always work for technical call centers. All right. They are more time consuming, Mm -hmm. lengthy calls. So, there used to be a lot of dead air. Yeah. So, to kill time, I used to just pick out a design Uh of the net and start drawing it on my hand. Just, uh, Just doodling. Like doodling, yeah. Things started looking good. Then I started making much precise designs. Mm-hmm. And whoever was sitting next to me has to take his hand and start drawing in on his hand, <laughs> drawing on pieces of paper. Oh. Things started looking good. So I asked the guy who had tattooed me mm-hmm. that uh, I clicked a few pictures, sent it to him and asked him whether can I tattoo. He said, like, your hand seems good, but tattooing is completely a different ball game. Yeah. So I was like, if you help me out, I'm sure, you know, I can figure it out. Mm -hmm. And friends were also encouraging that you should probably give it a try because you're good at it. Mm -hmm. The doodling work what I used to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's where the ball started rolling. And since I was in call centers, Mm -hmm. I had a lot of friends who were were ready to be my guinea pigs. Open-minded, yeah. 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 So that's, that's the whole procedure. That's how it started back then for me. And what is the story of your first tattoo? How did you get your first tattoo? Uh, like I said, I saw this friend of mine. We guys were chilling in in car. That's where we used to hang around. Mm-hmm. This friend of mine comes in and I see his hand is completely swollen, bleeding. And he's got a tattoo then. That's when I asked him, like, dude, what's up with this? I mean, does it really work out like this? Like, mm-hmm. it bleeds? He's like, yeah. So, that kind of intrigued me. So, I took down the details of the guy whom he got tattooed from. Mm-hmm. And I checked with him. I gave him a call after a few days. He asked me to come down and meet. We met up. We narrowed down on a design. Mm -hmm. And to my luck, he landed up uh, staying where he used to do his tattoos. Mm -hmm. Right in the lane next to me. Oh. So he was just in the next lane. So I just walked on for five minutes. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, trust me, everything started off there. Don't just show dumb luck. Yeah. And... uh, that's how I got my first tattoo done. I went and he showed me a couple of designs. Mm-hmm. I was back in the rocking rocker days and all with yeah, long yeah. hair. Yeah, yeah. I just picked out the third design you, that I you saw. You still got the rocker hair a little bit. Yeah, yeah now. <laughs> yeah. So, just picked out the design and then just went ahead with it. Mm-hmm. That's how I got my first tattoo done. Alright, and this is the same guy later on you worked yes. with, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And did your family support in this journey? Like back in the day, tattooing was not considered like a not pretty, really. pretty good profession, right? See, the thing is, uh, back in the days, nobody knew what tattooing was all about. Mm-hmm. It was just like a hobby for a lot of people. Right, right. Nobody saw it as a full-time career. Mm-hmm. And anything unconventional is something that people fear. Yeah. And back in the days... Even in academics, we had only three streams. Mm -hmm. It was either science, commerce or arts. Nobody had like multiple options like being a creative designer. Those all fields were not really that big. Mm -hmm. So for them to accept and understand the fact that I would want to start tattooing as a career Mm -hmm. was quite fearful and difficult. Pretty hard to digest. Yeah, I mean, who would? Because it's not a fixed source of income. Yeah. It's not that you get a salary. Right, right. So you, there is no guarantee that, that tomorrow your paycheck is going to come or no. Mm-hmm. So as Indian parents are usually, uh, they, they don't, as you said, they fear but they don't understand. So that these might be the reasons uh, they might be not liking this profession you, where you were heading. More, right? Moreover, it is like, you know, the, the job security, mm-hmm. the security of income. Right. Like fixed salary, Mm -hmm. you know, like that's how the Indian middle class mentality is, right? Right. That fixed salary, mahine ke end pe, this is what I should get. Paycheck should be coming. Paycheck aja na chahiye. So that just kind of gives them a sense of security that at the end of the month, you know you're going to get paid. Right. With this, you don't know because first and foremost, you don't know what the field is all about. Yeah. And you don't even know how much you're going to make out of it. Mm -hmm. Will it be good enough to sustain... Right. Will it be good enough to pay the bills? Mm-hmm. So when you don't know, of course, you're going to get scared. Yeah, in the end, it's it's a business, right? Business venture. So businesses are always up and down eventually. Yeah, there's always risk factor involved, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
so when they were not supporting you so how did you get started with the things which you required for starting this as a business or as a shop well honestly when i started it off the only thing what i required was a bit of money mm-hmm. and of course some support right. that would have been good right but unfortunately yeah like i said parents are not really keen on doing that mm-hmm. and money wise like i said you know uh, since i decided that mm-hmm. since i decided that i'm going to go for it mm-hmm. i had saved up some amount and i said like if you keep planning it never really happens right just go for it just go ahead and do it mm-hmm. so like when you started your tattoo shop you were working with the person you got the tattoo so you uh, how long you were work, working with them so i didn't really work with him mm-hmm. i used to just do a few tattoos at his uh at his house because i was using his equipments at that time yeah because mm-hmm. i didn't know anything about the business so mm-hmm. i was completely relied on him mm-hmm. yeah all right and then later on you started inks and needles what is the story behind the name so you know like when you're starting you want to name the shop and you want something something like you know cool name yeah you're young yeah yeah so i thought of like really some stupid names and all for example <laughs> like since i'm a scorpion and i'm a proud scorpion yeah yeah scorpion tattoos mm-hmm. or king pin tattoos like i'm a big <laughs> superhero movie buff and all um so i thought of those kind of like weird names mm mm-hmm. then i thought of like having a name which just shouts exactly what it is but you people can it. associate with yeah, it yeah yeah so that's when i thought of like what is the best i mean what is the most relevant thing for the job is the inks and the needles that we use right right so simple and plain but it yeah. speaks well of it, itself it, it exactly tells you what it is mm. inks and needles right 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 coming to your managing your time how do you manage your time so uh, like there must be specific period of time when you should devote your time for tattooing and or let's say drawing or the creative stuff which you do uh see you have to make some sacrifices mm-hmm. you have to start prioritizing things right moreover i would say is like it's if you like something honestly there is no management of time required mm. you, you like doing something you're going to spend more time towards it automatically yeah yeah it it keep burning in the back of your head right yeah so even if you're sitting somewhere else that thing is running in your head like it's like those guys who who are heavy into bodybuilding or they love working out mm-hmm. you'll always find them either in the gym or running on the roads right something like that right 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 and as you as you told you like superheroes but is your favorite superhero batman i'm a batman guy completely you are batman guy <laughs> so you got some you got some batman related stuff as well in your studio lots of it yeah i could see some dolls and everything yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah i've got i've got like a bat signal i've got like you got a, a bat signal yeah a proper bat signal which projects up to 20 feet oh my god so yeah i, I love batman like that i that's a character that i relate to in life mhm All right so did you use that bat signal somewhere No no not really I, it's like you know I'm too possessive about my toys and all you did so, not get them out right? Yeah especially the good ones are there locked at home All right mm-hmm. And are there any apps which you use on daily basis to manage your time and for client scheduling and communication with your team Like um, because we are living in the mobile world right So like I said the communication part with the team happens mostly in person mm-hmm. that's what I believe yeah but then relay of information is completely done through whatsapp because right sometimes I'm not there at the studio they update me everything mm-hmm. whatever happens at the studio mm-hmm. they keep updating me about it and that's how we kind of keep a open channel to it all right and for and any anything you use for client scheduling or is it just directly on calls we do use some apps and everything at times sometimes it works sometimes yeah, because yeah. you need to be tech savvy for that yeah yeah, yeah. not a lot of people sometimes there are some people who still prefer the old books diaries right right i'm not i prefer technology because it's there to help you might as well make the most of it right 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 so it's it's better to use what doesn't confuse the clients right definitely 
coming to now coming to your creative process what's your creative process while you're working with a client how do you get your inspiration like sometimes clients are coming in directly so they have something specific in their minds or the tattoo like the design etc or the story so how do you um, focus in that period and get that design to life um see what i do is i first and foremost sit and try and talk to them mm-hmm. whoever inquires with us over the phone and all we tell them come to the studio because once you sit talk to them understand their personality right uh it's like you can't really give a uh, you know kind of a bulky guy something very delicate right so it has to match your personality yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. so similarly i sit with them i talk to them i show them a few ideas talk once i understand what they want mm-hmm. we discuss things back and forth that's when i come to know what this person is exactly looking out for right and that's when i decide like me being the artist mm-hmm. i know better in terms of what artistry is right that's where my job comes in re- suggesting them deciding certain things for them and that's how i take it ahead because at the end of the day the person should be happy mm-hmm. and if they are happy they will keep you happy Simple. yeah 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 sometimes the clients might be coming up with the ideas which might they not come even come up with directly even... designs yeah so they do don't you, even let you do the thinking part do you do those designs which they want to place directly from the book directly on their hands without your creative process yeah see certain times people prefer visuals mm-hmm. you know they trust the visuals better than a concept mm-hmm. because that's again something that they don't know about right so we have to sit and talk to them show them something rough mm-hmm. so that they kind of get an idea right and if they like it they ask us to draw something out mm. but there are some people who are like exactly they want what they see right so that's where uh, our drawing part kind of goes for a toss it's a mix of lot of different kinds of clients right you can't have one set of clients all the time mm-hmm. yeah it, it's a very complex process yeah like today i was sitting in the studio along with you and i saw a couple of cases so then i can understand a lot of energy goes on into the process and sometimes the client is not uh, accepting the money part and sometimes the design part and sometimes it's something else completely there are 10000 things into it <laughs> yeah and like related to this design part in artist community the major problem i see is the theft of art i mean instead of taking someone's inspiration and like referencing it they just go ahead and copy it and then uh, like put their name on it and like how does that uh, go in tattoo industry it, it's quite it's like any other industry mm-hmm. to do your own thing you mm-hmm. need to put in efforts right and not every time your efforts are going to pay out right so what is the best way to do Mm-hmm. copy steal right i generally don't really like that because i have also it's not that i've not copied mm-hmm. i have also copied mm-hmm. initial days when i was an artist when i didn't have a knowledge about it mm-hmm. the easiest thing was to do is to take a picture and just draw it right later on i i will share a personal incident out here mm-hmm. so i had shown my work to another bigger tattoo artist right i met him in singapore Mm-hmm. and i showed him the work and he pointed out oh that's from one of my old tattoos <laughs> wow. and it was so embarrassing for me mm. that's the day when i decided that you know it's okay to take a reference mm-hmm. but not blindly steal it right. you can take an inspiration out of it right you can take that image but that image should not look like that image but it should look like your image your your piece so it's okay to take a reference yes, but not blindly just copy it yeah so it's something similar goes goes into the writing industry as well like where people are like doing plagiarism they are stealing the article and posting it so it's completely similar right if everyone could mm-hmm. then everyone would have been brilliant right this is the balance of nature yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that just helps us do better mm. and if your work gets copied that means there is something in you mm. you are good that people can't do right that's that's how i look at it but do you sue them 
I mean, is there any law preventing to steal? Can you do that if you want? Not really. Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't copy the image, but I can co- see the image, right? Once I see it, I can draw it the way I want it. Hmm. Can look the same. Ah. Oh. All right. So coming to uh, your routines and habits, how does your typical day look like? In a weekday, probably. Uh, it's for me. It's always been all about the work. I've mm-hmm. been a workaholic for years, mm-hmm. and I just keep working. So if I'm tattooing, mm-hmm. then I'm working on that. If I'm not tattooing, then either I'm trying to do a new design, trying to draw, or probably prepare for my next appointment. Right. These kind of things. So it all revolves around tattoos. So like thinking goes uh, there, and then drawing part, and then eventually tattooing. So yeah. all that. So it's sometimes you're... you just want to draw out something which you feel good about. Mm-hmm. So it's not necessary that you're drawing it for someone. Mm-hmm. But you have the liberty of the time. So yes. when you have an appointment, you can come down to the studio and work for whole day yeah. or night even. And yep. otherwise, you might not be coming. So it's it's pretty cool. Hmm. And related to that, uh, do you follow any physical uh, like exercise routine or something like that? Because you are a creative and a lot of creative, <laughs> like I know, they don't follow such routines. Creative people are lazy people. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's not really lazy, but for them, like the thing that that drives them, it's not that not everyone does it that way. Right. It depends what your passions is. I know tattoo artists who are like so dedicated to gymming and all, also. Mm-hmm. I am not one of those guys. Right. I prefer playing. So I mm. play a lot of cricket. Mm-hmm. That's my exercise. So you play cricket. Yeah. As an exercise. In a week, I play cricket at least around two, three times. Wow. In usual days, are you a non-vegetarian? Oh, uh, I was a vegetarian for thirty-two years. Thirty-two years. And now I've been non-vegetarian for last three years. <laughs> All right. Probably when you started traveling, then it became it more became popular. helpful. Actually, ah. what happened was I started eating non-veg just before I started traveling, mm-hmm. and that was the biggest. I mean, I would say the one of the wisest decisions because when I traveled, oh, I got to eat so much of awesome food, mm-hmm. got to try so much of delicacies, and yeah, the world cuisine, man, that's brilliant. What is the best dish which you had ever in your life? I would say there are a couple of them. Mm-hmm. Like once we had been to this one restaurant in a uh, restaurant in uh, Paris. All right. It was fine dining. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, the kind of meal that I had there. Unfortunately, I don't remember what I had is because it was all in French. Right. My friends ordered it for me, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Cool, let's do this." <laughs> all right. And it was yum. Again in Nepal, we had recently this year itself. We had like one amazing meal by this Italian guy who runs a small restaurant in Nepal. In Nepal, mm-hmm. and he cooks amazing food. Is amazing. there any is there any name of the chef or uh, the shop probably from Paris and from Nepal? Uh, the Paris uh, shop is uh, Chez Trente Trois. Okay, it's like how in India if you read it it will be Chai C H A I. Okay, and thirty three. Chai thirty three. Yeah, so it's Chez thirty three. All right. So that's in Bercy, in Bercy. Paris. There's okay. this area called Bercy where a lot of these pubs and restaurants are. Mm-hmm. The one in Nepal, I unfortunately forgot. The guy's name was probably Phil, Phil, or something like that. I don't remember. All right. But we do. We will be meeting him soon again next year in you Nepal. You might because, have his uh, Instagram reference or something like that. Yeah, could be. But I don't remember what it is called. <laughs> so it gets difficult to search again. Yeah, we'll check it out probably and yeah. put it in the show notes maybe. Moving on, uh, what kind of mindfulness practice uh, do you do usually? Is there any which you do? I'm not into meditating and all. Mm-hmm. For me, it's just relax, watch a good movie, mm-hmm. watch a good show. Are you a movie person or are you a book person? No, I'm absolutely not a book person. Movies, it's all movies all the time. So, what kind of movies like documentaries or? I watch a mix of everything. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'm like more keen on watching comedies, all just right. you know, keep a light moment. Sometimes I like to get into it, so I just sit peacefully and watch some serious uh, movie thrillers yeah, and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of keeps you engaged. Mm-hmm. Depends on the mood. Moving on from the mindfulness. Coming to your company and the 
team which you manage now i can see you have like two artists with you working full time yeah. and also couple of employees and a few interns so how do you lead this team to ensure everyone is growing i usually go a very different approach mm-hmm. i'm not a guy who will kind of like a politician or something like you know give a speech mm-hmm. all i make them do is i make the work so mechanical for them that the only thing that can come out of it is they go get better right it's practice i make make sure that they keep working mm-hmm. keep drawing basically telling them the skills which they actually require for this yeah job. because it's like you don't realize that the more you keep doing it it you just become natural at it mhm you so tuned to it mhm it it's more boring job because you keep doing the same thing over and over again right but when you look back after 2 years mm-hmm. you realize why was that done mm. because you've already crossed those barriers right so it's all about dedication keep working that's it Coming it's out. it's like how i would put it across as if your base is stronger yeah yeah doesn't matter what you build on it mm-hmm. it's going to stay strong it's endless yeah, yeah yeah so basics is the key to everything yeah mm-hmm. when you take a new artist or an intern under your wing how do you orient them towards your vision for ink and needles as a brand but like still giving them the artistic freedom to express their own identities first and foremost whenever i take a new guy in i'm very open and very clear about a few things i first tell them that you know it's like you have to be first and foremost a part of the team mm-hmm. you can have your individuality and all everything mm-hmm. but that should never hamper the team as a whole right you need to be helpful you need to be taking responsibilities towards things set realistic expectations is like it's not that you walk in and from tomorrow onwards you get everything right you have to work your way towards it if you have worked somewhere else if you are an experienced artist and then you're joining me mm-hmm. then of course first thing is you need to come down to a, our base level right like shatter your own egos and then exactly you need to understand how our wavelength works because not two tattoo studios work alike So you can't really expect the same thing what you were expecting somewhere else mm-hmm. maybe you might be a great artist but if the wavelength just doesn't match you won't be happy if you're not happy it affects the team it affects the whole shop it affects the whole vibe of the studio right right, right. we don't need people like that mm. but yeah flexibility and all and then you just get tuned in yeah, yeah. i i actually recently read one book obstacle is the way and the author in that book uh, like there was this quote which he stated if you are starting up you should learn first how to say yes in the end you will be learning like when you grow up you will be learning how to say no but in the start you should learn how to say yes to even pity things or pity jobs then only probably your, your fundamentals will get better and you will start earning the actual skills see it's like become something mm. and then you'll automatically get a liberty to say no right okay and is there any person in your life uh, who had a big impact on your life as an artist maybe someone uh, who had mentored you in some ways well uh, i would say the only person that even uh, i would say remotely i look up to his like my mentor lama he had helped me if he, it wouldn't have been him mm-hmm. i wouldn't have got the opportunity and all right so it's it's all up to him but i never really did much work with him mm-hmm. i did pretty much everything by myself mm-hmm. some you can say i'm pretty much self taught all right so it's i don't really have somebody like that who has influenced me like that mm-hmm. uh, i was my own teacher for that point of time right yeah probably when you are getting into something really which is really new you might have to learn it on your own ways. yeah it's yeah. it's better to learn it on your own is because then you get a chance to do a lot of errors mm-hmm. which you can rectify right if people only teach you to do the right thing mm-hmm. the day when you do the wrong thing you don't even realize what to do about it 
So it's better to make mistakes and amend them by yourself rather than not knowing what mistakes are and if you don't know what mistakes are, how can you amend them? Right, right. On that note, do you like failures and is there any favorite failure? Failure is the first step to success. Right. Is there any favorite or like the the failure which changed your life in some ways? Lots of them, lots of them. Anyone coming to mind? Uh, failure is a part of daily routine, I would say. Mm-hmm. Like um, while doing tattoos or something like that, you... There are times wherein uh, you fail on different levels. Like, say probably you wanted to do something. Mm-hmm. But the person wanted something different. There was a difference of opinion. Right. And the person left. You couldn't do the tattoo. Mm-hmm. So that was a failure at a certain level that... How is it that I make sure that I don't go through the same problem again? Right. That teaches me what I don't need to do Mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So all those small, small things, like a day-to-day thing, it's say probably not reaching on time. That's a failure. Right. So how do you train yourself to reach on time? So you need to start doing time management. Right. The one thing leads to another. One person, the studio is not clean. So that means you need to start setting up a time aside to do the cleaning for the studio to look good. Yeah, because that is one of the major yeah. things. The look of the studio makes a lot of difference. Hygiene and everything comes into play. Mm-hmm. So failures, like I said, it depends. Now when you talk about failure, what's your definition of failure? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Reaching five minutes late is also failure. Right. It's the way you look at it. Right. So self Challenge is the best key to success, I would say. Keeping, keeping, proving from your uh, Like I said, if you're trying to compete with somebody else, your competition is over the day when you succeed over him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is there next? But if you're competing with yourself, the battle is 24-7. It's always on. Yeah. 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 All right. And if someone who has never done a tattoo, I mean, this question is probably arising from my curiosity as well. Uh, but if someone who has never done a tattoo but is curious, what advice you would give to them to get their first tattoo? Uh, like which part of the body one should go for for the first time and what qualities one should be looking while hunting for a tattoo artist? Well, if somebody is looking for a tattoo for the first time, mm-hmm. I would always say that do your research, do right. your homework. Mm-hmm. You need to go and talk to like it uh, to a couple of artists, mm-hmm. go to a couple of studios, mm-hmm. see their work, see, do your own set of research, what are the charges, everything. Why would you select one particular artist is something what you need to have a reason for. Mm. It can't be like, just because this place looks fancy, I'm right. going to eat there. Doesn't mean that the food out there is good. So you need to understand what are you going in for. Mm. If you're going in for the good food, then the ambience should not make a difference. Right. But if you get all under one roof, mm-hmm. that's perfect, right? Right. A lot of times, people look at something, the, the proverb itself, right? All that glitters is not gold. Mm. So, true. and again, you need to have a good vibe because you're going to trust the person. It's all about the connection. Tattoo first. you. Yeah, yeah. And make something permanent on your body. You mm-hmm. need to have that faith in that person. Right. And... What is the best craft or style like for the audience to know for which you are mainly known for? So I'm, I'm known majorly for my color work. Color work. I really do some really good color work mm-hmm. and people seem to have liked it a lot. Right. And managing that on Indian skin tone is difficult. Yeah. But still I pull it off. So that is what I'm really known for. Mm-hmm. I've got a very good sense on colors. Mm-hmm. And uh, doing the cleanest tattoos that heal well. Is right. what I'm known for. Right. Everyone knows that usually we are not printing machines. Mm-hmm. That we are going to be exactly spot on every time. Yeah. We do falter too. Mm-hmm. But how often is the key? Right. That That is what sets you apart. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like it's like Sachin also gets out on duck once upon a time, right? <laughs> right. But that doesn't blemish his record. Mm-hmm. That is what it is. It's not about... Doing perfect every time. Mm -hmm. It's about how often you do it. Consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency, That's what I believe. Consistency is the key. Yeah. 
and where do you get your uh, like inspiration for new pieces so is it influenced by other artists or it's always like your own uh, ideas any any website you refer uh, or something I, like I that i look around at a lot of things like it mm-hmm. not necessarily only websites mm-hmm. i can see art everywhere around me like you know it could be the shape of the building the shape of the car mm. the shape of a person right uh, it could be the tiles that you walk on mm-hmm. you know you can see a texture out there so art is around everywhere it's how you see it and how you convert it mm. that's the whole thing because online and everything that's very definite of art right something that you have seen and everyone has seen the art is all about something new so that is what you want to do right come out with some new things new ideas for that you need to take inspiration if you just keep doing one thing how can there be something new mm. you can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results right you have to do different things for different results mm-hmm. that's the whole point coming to the technology aspect to it uh, what workstation uh, do you use generally and which phone do you use like do you integrate phone and workstation with no, each other no but uh, we do a lot of our drawing on ipads now IPads. everybody is started switching to ipads because okay. that gives you more liberty saves a lot of time right saves paper <laughs> yeah and there's a lot more that can be done in shorter period of time mm-hmm. so ipads is right now the you know the in thing today for every tattoo artist okay or across the world you might have everyone, seen everyone yeah. yeah and one of my friend was only the one who convinced me to get one mm mm-hmm. okay yeah. so i worked on it for a couple of days i used this and i was like okay sold i'm going to buy this all right which which ipad do you have i've got the ipad pro it's 12.9 12.9 because that kind of gives you the reference of a a4 size right right page. paper yeah so it kind of goes as good as drawing on paper yeah yeah, yeah. but it's just that it's digital there there are a couple more new ipads there are smaller coming. ipads there are new ipads that are coming out yeah without like less bezel i mean yeah yeah the major thing which might convince you is the pencil which came out the new pencil has got certain yeah. buttons on it and all yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the maybe. pressure sensitivity and all that stuff it is yeah maybe all right so uh, on ipad uh, what apps do you use for drawing and designing are there any there are a couple apps? of uh, apps that i use i make sure of depends on what sort of work i want to do mm-hmm. there is procreate procreate and, yeah that's the most widely used app okay. and there is painstorm mm-hmm. sketchbook mm-hmm. then uh, a few more smaller apps for like doing smaller stuff and all right right and in the in the new social media apps which one do you like more for tattooing purpose these is everything is become instagram instagram mm-hmm. yeah there was a time when facebook was the in thing now instagram is there right all right so coming to your tattoos how many tattoos you have got i've got six tattoos on me six tattoos Uh, you told me one japanese tattoo also is there right yeah the last one that i got done was a japanese tattoo that is the last one yeah this year i got it done in jan um during a festival in goa that takes place every year all right uh, a friend of mine comes down from japan he's a traditional tabori artist tabori art yeah basically they don't use machine they use directly needles they poke to your skin oh my god so it's like a hand poking oh so i just wanted to get an experience of that mm mm-hmm. and yeah i mean i told him like you know this time i would love to get something done mm-hmm. he said he had some time free so we we got it done so this tabori art is it's more painful than the usual tattooing not really in fact it looks more painful but is actually less all right uh what advice would you give to youngsters who are keen to pursue their passions like you started with tattooing right so what kind of advice would you like to give to youngsters hard work Mm-hmm. you need to work hard the thing is that is the most difficult part to do mm-hmm. dedicate yourself mm-hmm. work towards it have a plan sit down think about it it just can't be a day thing right it might be the rest of your life which you might be deciding right yeah so you need to start working towards it pros and cons of it lot of things all right coming back to the social media Uh, aspect what do you think about the impact of social media on your business and on yourself as an individual 
uh i see social media is good it's kind of got the whole world uh you Can know in a very narrow space yeah but again not necessarily it is true mm-hmm. it's like just because the advertisements were good doesn't mean the product is nice right because the advertisements only show you the good side of it mm-hmm. and social media with all the filters and everything it's it's a glamorous way of presentation right sometimes the lives of people are not that interesting yeah. <laughs> how how they show up on the instagram with the filters so um your business how does it uh, it gets impacted uh, from social media like you get your online sales like uh, clients coming in from See, the social, social media social media helps you present your work to a wider range mm-hmm. so word of mouth will only go from one person to another right this will probably go from one person to probably hundreds and thousands and 10000 and across the world yeah so it just kind of gives you a better reach mm-hmm. and of course it does help your uh, you know increase your business mm-hmm. in today's world it is the key mm-hmm. right for a successful business you need your social media platform to be super strong so do you have someone specific in your like shop not working? really Focus. not really okay so everyone like you said yeah it's everyone everyone who is like some days you will see the post coming back to back uh-huh. some days there's a dry spell there's no right like you said you know we guys are kind of lazy towards it right not necessarily we do that every day in day out right but when we get time we do it mm-hmm. because it's still out there mm-hmm. so and do you have a portfolio website where you post the important work you, which you would like to display and who manages it um, and what kind of platform you have it on uh um, basically instagram is the most important thing that we do mm-hmm. other than that we have got our uh, facebook page mm-hmm. but then again let's face it like if you talk about today facebook is almost dead right instagram is right now the most happening thing mm-hmm. website we do have our website we do upload our images out there mm-hmm. we uh, the, the guy who's developed the website is the guy we just send him the photographs and he uploads it there all right so he manages the website and yeah. the content itself yeah. all right and on the personal note uh, what advice would you give to your own younger self if you would oh lots lots there are 10000 things that i always keep regretting that i should have done this mm-hmm. i should have done that any specific thing coming to mind which which might have social changed? media <laughs> let's face it like i should have started posting more and everything and all mm-hmm. then again i should have taken certain decisions right. about doing certain things at certain time mm-hmm. you know sometimes that helps sometimes that doesn't help right so these kind of small small things like i said i'm my biggest critic mm-hmm. i'm always like trying to tell myself that dude don't do this next time mm. learning from the mistake yeah and then you do another mistake then you tell yourself don't do that next time right. so it's it's so a, it's a daily cycle it's like a jigsaw puzzle of <laughs> failures and problems and mistakes totally. yeah, yeah yeah but that that is what uh, makes the picture of your life colorful right true mhm all right and coming to the next question what under 5000 rupees Uh, purchase you have recently made which changed your life in positive way procreate it's 800 Procre- bucks <laughs> mm, all right and as you are not a book uh, aficionado so i'll skip this question but i can I, i can ask you what kind of movies or any specific movie which you which you would like to recommend here uh, any documentary any specific godfather period godfather godfather it teaches a lot any specific thing it teaches you which you used in your life everything a simple thing like there is this one very good dialogue when they try to kill marlon brando mm-hmm. and al pacino comes and says that you know what this wasn't personal it was just business mm. so you know what we tend to get too emotional about everything around us right uh, i don't read that way i'm very neutral towards things mm-hmm. it's business um uh, i would never deny the fact that we are also doing tattoos not only for art or not only for fun mm-hmm. but even to pay our bills right so it's business it's business eventually yep yeah. 
and as an artist how do you handle criticism i welcome it i encourage it because sometimes probably i don't see my own faults mm. if somebody comes and tells me mm-hmm. even if you tell me in a good way as well as a bad way mm-hmm. as soon as i come to know i'm going to deal with it right like what what strategies you put in to Just deal like, deal that uh, particular identify situation. the problem mm-hmm. start observing it see if that is really a problem yeah, yeah sometimes or is it just a one off thing sometimes it's opinion of someone then yeah. a problem right yeah so it could be n number of things you just need to be aware of it whether it is seriously a threat mm-hmm. or it's something that needs to be dealt with urgently right right those kind of things mm-hmm. all right and coming to the traveling part you travel a lot right uh, so what are your main traveling spots and how much time of the year you spend traveling and how do you keep yourself financially stable in those periods well see traveling i always love traveling so any opportunity i get i would just go away mm-hmm. i do make sure that my travels are not that heavy and i've started traveling after like 15 years of traveling right so i've i've saved good enough so that i can sustain the traveling. sustain the traveling part and and sometimes when i travel i work right right so that time i do get paid that also helps a bit yeah 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 because yeah. conversion also happens yeah 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 so a mixture of all that's all i can say mm, right any any specific traveling spot you would oh, like to recommend germany germany which any specific place comes to mind where uh, you would like to refer people to go to Uh, there are a lot of places man i i mean i've been to sweden i've been to london i've been to paris mm-hmm. amsterdam all these places and every place has got its own charm mm-hmm. like sweden is beautiful mm-hmm. same thing with paris london i mean everything has got its own 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 vibe yeah mm-hmm. so it depends again on you but every time you travel you get to see something new yeah yeah but so, but do you know many, uh, multiple languages as well not really because most of these people do speak english right right so that should not be a problem mm-hmm. any specific uh, advice would you like to give to someone who wants to travel for long term like any tips or something plan like i said everything works on planning you can't just get up and leave mm. yeah sometimes people they want to travel for... but they can't because either your finances are not in place right or your visa documents are not in place right when you like i said there's a lot of planning required to that yeah. too yeah you cannot backpack to another country or like exactly. the the next day so uh is there any advice would you like to give to someone who wants to start their own tattooing business probably like any artist who might be listening to this um what i would tell them is like see it's it was way easier for us back then mm-hmm. to do what they are trying to do right uh get a career into it because back then there was nobody else doing it mm-hmm. but in today's time the competition has gone quite high so the kind of success that we got mm-hmm. you won't get that that quickly right because with the least amount of efforts we got a lot more things because we were less people to take it mm-hmm. but now today there are so many people who are ready to grab opportunities right so you need to be something unique yeah or like i said associate yourself learn mm-hmm. join up with the tattoo artist right spend some time into the different studios like collaborate with them yeah. and work for them right yeah it comes down to the same thing like when you are starting up you should say yes to things all right uh, so any parting words for my audience any advice or any any ask you would like to tell people who are listening to this uh all all i would tell people is a simple fact like be true to yourself mm-hmm. and dream if you want to grow do anything in life and not to live life in a fear of failure that's why we stop doing half of the things Right. and there's absolutely nothing that is not achievable mm-hmm. but without efforts nothing is achievable right 
it's not only about spending time towards it it's spending dedicated time working towards it and again patience mm-hmm. one day at a time mm-hmm. you can't do everything in one day yeah, yeah, yeah. one step after another yeah. right that's the way to go so it was a pleasure talking to you chirag uh, where can people reach you do you want to divert the audience to some uh, place like a social media uh, page or something like that or well you like- guys can uh, check out our website it's uh, www.inksandneedles.in mm-hmm. you can reach us on instagram our user id is inksandneedles but with the letter n instead of and all right all right uh, or you can just go on to google and type in some needles you'll get all the possible information yeah. there all right so i'll put all these links and the good stuff from this episode in the show note which i'll prepare and thanks for making the time and uh, like it was wonderful conversation and i i also got to know a lot of stuff which i was curious about thanks for that thank you so much for inviting me on your show uh it was a pleasure i always love talking so it's good to talk to different people educate them mm-hmm. whatever i have experienced in life it's good to share with people mm-hmm. i don't know if it affects someone might help someone i don't know but you know i'm going to try my best to do that mm-hmm. and thanks for your show to you know allow me to do that hey guys this is himanshu again now before you move on here's something i want to share with you I have one weekly newsletter which is called Saturday Pentacle. You can think of it as a weekly one page magazine for the curious minds where you'll find five awesome things which I've been pondering on in the last week. It may contain popular articles, blogs, photographs, Instagram posts, books, videos, products or thoughts. It's completely free. If you want to get it just go to himanshusasdeva.com that's my name himanshusasdeva.com and drop in your email you'll get the very next one i hope you enjoy it and thank you for listening